Welcome back, everyone, to the Passive Road to Retirement podcast. We're your hosts, Andrew Jarrett and Nick Cooper. Today, we are joined by Kurt Warner. Kurt began his real estate investing journey with JFK Properties in 2018. After spending eight years trading stocks, options, and Forex, as well as a failed attempt on his first deal in 2007, Kurt has become an instrumental part of the success of JFK Solutions. Kurt and his two business partners have focused on multifamily and commercial properties in Northern Ontario and Eastern Canada. Kurt's strengths are his ability to analyze properties and uncover opportunities. Calm demeanor and willingness to go after any deal that makes sense, regardless of the size. Kurt, welcome to the show. Thank you guys for having me. Kurt, awesome to have you here. So I'll dive right in. So stocks to real estate, uh, which do you think is a better investment right now? Right now, I would say historically, real estate uh, definitely outperforms the financial markets. Um, there are certainly those that are, you know, educated professionals when it comes to, you know, whether somebody's trading, you know, Forex stocks or options that perform extremely well, especially if you're doing it from the standpoint of starting a business and having your own hedge fund. But, you know, throughout, I guess, our lifetimes, more millionaires have been made, as everybody knows, through real estate. So for that reason, uh, definitely picking real estate, also extremely passive if you set it up the right way. Yep. Great. That's awesome. <laughs> totally agree with you. You're, you're, in the, uh, you're in a good group here. So are you mostly out of stocks now, or do you kind of do a mix of real estate and, and stock for your personal investing? I've been out of stocks since uh, 2017. Um, kind of took a break when I realized that you know I was spending a lot of time, um, you know, trading, watching the markets, and although I was doing fairly well, I realized it wasn't something I could leave uh, to my kids, grandkids, or anything like that. So I could certainly pass on the knowledge and skill to do it, but there was nothing tangible there that they could benefit from. You know, 20, 30, 40 years from now. So that's why I shifted back into to real estate investing. Awesome. Nice. Great answer. Uh, so 2007, you had a, a deal failed or deal attempted. I'd like to hear more about that and, and what happened. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a backstory to that one. So in 2004, I uh, left university, uh, got my first job. I was actually doing uh, sales for newspaper ads uh, just in you know the city that I went to school in. And uh, I remember starting to get my footing, I think, understanding sales, understanding how to approach businesses uh, for ad space. And so on a Thursday, about two months in, I went into my boss's office, uh, typical, you know, Thursday morning, hey, before you go out, rah, rah, encouragement. Uh, she had other ideas in mind. And uh, at that point in time, I was let go. Uh, I remember specifically, and this has stuck with me uh, till this day, is she said I couldn't sell. So uh, right after school, first job gone and uh, spent the summer trying to figure out what my next steps would be. And I remember going to a wedding with my girlfriend at the time and one of her best friends who was also at the wedding. Um, you know, I knew she traveled a lot, you know, was doing well financially. I was like, what do you do? And she said that she worked for a company that taught people how to invest in real estate and financial markets. So I started to tell her that I'd been managing property for my mom for several years while I was at school, um, dealt with bad tenants, good tenants, um, you know, ended up selling that property. So kind of had an idea at a fairly young age about the real estate market. So I did apply for that job and got it in 2004 and, you know, met some amazing people. So a few years in myself and a couple other guys that I was working with decided to you know, start a company, invest in real estate. So I'm like, awesome. So okay. through our connections, we actually found a property that was in pre foreclosure. So it was a woman whose husband had, you know, left, they were divorced and she just needed to get out, cover the mortgage and kind of move on with her life. So we stepped in, we bought the property. We used hundred percent financing through hard money. So it was appraised. And this is back in 2007 at uh, 740,000. We actually bought it for five hundred ninety thousand, which okay. included giving her thirty thousand um, that she could kind of take, and you know she had young kids, so it really worked well as an acquisition for us. Mm -hmm. But because we didn't work with a coach, didn't work with a mentor, 
Um, and I think there's a little bit of that young bravado ego kind of at play. We oh, didn't yeah. stage the property. Uh, we hired the wrong realtor. Um, and then the market also started to turn. So we ended up holding on to that property for about six months. And because of you know the interest rate on the hard money loan, the expenses on a property that large ended up losing money on that. So that's when I transitioned. I'm like real estate does not work. I'm out. I'm going to trade. And so yeah, so that's how I made that transition, and that was the first deal that uh, that I did myself with well with a couple of business partners. Hey everyone, hope you're enjoying this episode. Are you ready to maximize your real estate investing to its full potential? Join us at Level Up REI Coaching and take your life and business to all new levels. Send an email to nick at leveluprecoach.com. That's nick, N-I-C, at leveluprecoach.com. Do you do single family at all still, or is it pretty much all multifamily commercial now? Everything that we do is multifamily and commercial. Um, so when we formed uh, JFK, this was back in 2018, uh, we actually went through, took a few courses with the company I was with, on like creative financing, income properties. We took a wholesale course as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really a, a defining moment for me, realizing that, you know, this time around I was working with, you know, people, obviously we were a bit older, um, but with people that actually wanted to learn how to do this business properly. So we ended up our first um, uh, property that we purchased was actually a six unit building. Um, so we okay. didn't start with single family. It was, you know, looking for cash flow. So the larger the deal, the better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you went right for it. You skipped all that and just went for it. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. And it was an interesting process because, you know, we live just outside of the greater Toronto area, which is a you know high price market like you guys have in the right. US. If you're in New York, if you're, you know, in Los Angeles, you know, any major centers are going to be really high price. So yep. because we were looking for cash flow, we started to look everywhere, you know, across the country. And so doing the research on markets, we found that Northern Ontario and then the East Coast were kind of the two best when it came to cash flow. So we decided Northern Ontario for the simple fact it was drivable for us. Um, now, drivable meaning we're about four hours away. So, you know, we don't really go up there often. Uh, we went up there twice to meet our realtor, to start building our power team to get an idea of what the area and market was like. More so because, you know, we were starting out as new investors, so we didn't want to go in completely blind. Um, but, you know, definitely we saw our first property we actually got accepted was a 10 unit um, property, but um, we actually saw that one and decided it was not for us. And um, I'm trying to come up with the appropriate PG phrase for, for what we'd call it, but it was a dump. Right. Needless to say, okay. when we when we saw it, and uh, so we passed that one. But with our realtor, who we're still working with to this day, uh, we did find that six unit property that we closed on. Nice. Now, do you manage these yourself? No, no. no. My days of property management uh, <laughs> are, are are long behind me. So, um, as I mentioned, we did meet our power team with our realtor. And so that included our property management company. Um, we actually met the founder uh, when we went up and she walked through the six unit property with us. To, we got a good sense of her strategy on how to increase income, deal with tenants because there were some problem tenants there, add um, you know, laundry for extra income. Um, we had solar on the property. We had a large parking lot in the back. So her and her team actually worked to get us um, revenue from charging parking to businesses that were behind the building. Hmm. And then we had a small shed out front that somehow she rented to one of the tenants. I have no idea how she did it. <laughs> but so we were generating solar revenue, parking revenue, rental revenue, storage revenue, all from the first deal. That's awesome. That's great. So we can kind of, you're actually our second person we've had on from Canada. Can you go through what the difference is investing in Canada vice the U S is, is, are we, are we missing out in Canada, the great white North? It is very similar. And one thing I would say for Americans, um, obviously with the exchange rate where it's at now, uh, mm -hmm. there's definitely a huge advantage. Obviously you have to, the corporate structure is completely different. We don't have, you know, LTs, LLCs, but you're still doing business in a corporation. You're not owning real estate personally. If you are, you're not treating it as a business and doing it right. Um, when it comes to financing, again, very similar um, in a lot of places in the U.S., 
you'll see like Royal Bank of Canada, TD Canada Trust, so Canadian mm -hmm. Canadian lenders. Uh, we don't have a ton of different smaller community banks. You're really dealing with the big five. Um, we obviously have secondary tier lenders and tertiary tier lenders as well. But you'll find that if you're an American looking to invest in Canada, it's going to be pretty familiar for you. I think the one difference, obviously, is population. You know, we're about 10th the size and we don't have as many markets that are extremely low priced. Like I remember speaking with uh, friends of mine who invest in the U.S., where they're looking at properties that were like 25,000, 30, 40, 50,000. Like we don't have any of those in any of our markets, but our rents are pretty high. So you do have a nice ability to cash flow as long as you find the right market. Do you have also in Canada, kind of like we have, you know, uh, federally backed, you know, mortgages? Do you have like Freddie Fannie, that type of thing, or is it all like private? Banks? We have CMHC, would be probably the equivalent um, that are insured mortgages as well. So that is another vehicle that some investors use when they're going for financing. There are some, you know, just for you guys, there are some pluses, there's some minuses, but you have to, you know, look at the deal, look at your financing and make that decision on what type of financing fits best for that deal. Okay. Thank you. Did you maybe give us a overview, like a deal breakdown of maybe your favorite deal you guys have done so far, you know, how oh. you found it, how you financed it. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Favorite deal. Um, <laughs> there's, there's one that um, we, we currently own. It's a commercial property. That was an interesting one. Uh, so our realtor brought it to us. It was off market. Um, he had actually, or sorry, his broker had actually sold it to the existing owner hmm. who bought a church and decided to renovate this church that was then leased to a, a government subsidized daycare uh, for 10 years. So when our realtor bought it to us, they they said it was unique. Um, obviously, you convert a church to a daycare is a unique building. Um, but, you know, just like how we make all our decisions, it was cash flow. Uh, so we looked at the numbers, um, looked at what we were paying for the property. The fact that it was recently renovated as well is awesome. And the fact that we had 10 years. So we actually went in um, and I've never seen the property. And it, it's, it's interesting that once you get to a certain stage as an investor, um, I've seen pictures of one of the buildings that we own. I'm like, we own that? <laughs> I've never seen it. Um, so just looking at the numbers. But this one was interesting because it not only gave us a chance to generate passive income, but you know, a lot of us get into this business, you know, obviously you want to generate revenue. Mm -hmm. But it's also a nice feeling to know that we're providing a safe, secure place for kids in that city to actually go and get taken care of. And because it's government subsidized, we're helping people who financially otherwise might not be able to afford to put their kids into daycare. So uh, that's probably my favorite deal just because of those two factors of that sense of giving back and serving other people in a community that we've been investing in since the start. And also just because it's cool to say, yeah, we own a church. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a win-win, right? How about yep. the community and, and cash flow at the same time? Now, do you find all your deals through a realtor? Do you go direct to seller at all? Or how does that work? It really depends. Like one of the things that um, I believe in is creating relationships. Um, and it should always be a situation where you're trying to help the other person more than they're trying to help you. And by creating relationships like that, since we've started, we now have deals coming to us um, and opportunities coming to us. Obviously not everyone's going to be a good one and mm -hmm. we'll pass on them. But, um, you know, for example, uh, a realtor that I made a connection with that we've never closed on a deal, but every once in a while he'll say, Hey, here's something I thought you guys might like. And typically it's, um, properties that are off market. And the most recent one he sent, um, you know, ran the numbers and it was okay, but we're looking at doing a larger deal. I'm like, well, I'd rather take on the larger deal than the smaller one at this point in time. But I said, you know what I'll do? I will post it in, you know, our community page where we have over 600 people that are, you know, either somewhat seasoned investors, some are newer, some are kind of intermediate and I'll post it for you. Um, obviously I'm not making any money or as a business, we're not making any money, but if I can help him get that property sold, hopefully the next right. time he has something off market, he'll send it our way again. Building that relationship capital. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, even the larger deal that we have now um, was uh, is off market again. Uh, 
and you know he was looking for you know uh, looking to sell and he's looking to get into development so he has i think it's 44 units in total across a few buildings and somebody that i've known for years we have a great relationship together um was talking to him and he's like oh i I think I know somebody that might be interested in that. So he contacted me. I contacted him and here we go. So it's always nice to find off market deals where you're not competing. Mm -hmm. Although the market has changed with interest rates going up where you're not getting like, you're not getting into bidding wars and trying to compete with 15, 30 other investors looking at properties. Um, but it is nice not to have to spend time searching and hunting for deals anymore. So kind of peeling back a bit on, on that, what is your plan for 23? For 23, yeah. um, honestly, when, when the year started, it was, it was interesting. Obviously, we want to grow the portfolio um, and also work with other people. So one of the things with our, our business and where we're at, it was looking at, you know, we you know, built the business initially. But we also have other interests and other hobbies. Like I've started my own you know, mentoring business that is not real estate related, but that can help investors that are struggling to find like a uh, balance between growing a business, kids, maybe work and any kind of hobbies, activities that they have. And also looking at deals and saying, hey, here's an opportunity that we have. Do we want to do this together or is it something that we do separately? So I think that is one thing that made this year interesting from a planning standpoint, but definitely looking for larger deals. Like we are looking at this 44 unit right now and um, trying to tackle that and just add more to the portfolio and uh, just continue to grow. Um, the other big thing for me for this year, I met with um, I some, one of my friends that's a life coach just before the holidays. And she'd asked me, which I think is a very interesting question. She said, if you had one word to define 2022, what would it be? And for me, it was growth. Um, in 2022, when I started, uh, we didn't have our own podcast. Um, I was always, from my career standpoint, always behind the scenes in marketing, possibly in sales, but mostly in upper management. And I never wanted to be in front of a camera. I never wanted to be in a Zoom call. And um, I decided to you know, take that step and take that leap and start to grow and start to share more of my kind of story and my, you know, knowledge with other people. So um, that was really the word for 2022. But for 2023, I said it's service. I want to serve more people, um, which is one of the reasons why we started Thrive Community to help other investors um, kind of learn and grow. So we do, you know, free webinars, twice a week, um, we will start offering different courses and education for people to participate in as well that want to do it. But our goal from the beginning was to just serve and help people. And uh, same thing that I'm doing with my other business, Life Balance Mentor, is to serve and help people. That's great. So uh, it's Thrive great. Community go, is, go ahead, Andy. Okay, so, so Thrive Community is your Facebook group, right? You can search that on, and find that on Facebook? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's amazing how much it's grown. Um, you know, three of us started it back in November and uh, we're already over 600. I think we're probably nearing about 625, 630. And uh, I, I was shocked when we hit 500 and it just keeps continuing to grow. But yeah. I guess that shows that, you know, what we are providing to the people that are there and participating, they find value in it and they're sharing with others. So that's awesome. That's great. Now your coaching business, do you have any any habits that you try to teach people to stick to to kind of help be more successful in work or or life? You know, to kind of balance that out. Yeah, there there are a few tips that um, that I have and strategies that I that I like to share. Um, one thing that I've found with you know people I've worked with so far is that not many people have a plan. Um, so you know, it's kind of like fly by the seat of the pants, whatever comes up. You know, you might have something booked in the calendar that's a personal event or a meetup, but when it comes to actually trying to grow your business, very few people actually say, I'm going to have dedicated an hour or two to work on this. Other things that I've seen, you know, outside of real estate and outside of entrepreneurship, but in relationships, um, people are trying to work kind of a nine to five, start a business, and they don't plan time with their significant other. And I remember having a conversation recently with somebody that went through kind of the first week um, program that I did. 
And she said what I provided her and kind of that strategy has definitely helped her marriage because they weren't spending time together because they did not allocate that dedicated time. So that's definitely one thing that I've seen. And the other big one is people don't realize how they're spending their day. So one of the first exercises I do um, with people is actually have them, you know, write down every 15 minutes. And I know it sounds like a lot, but I, you don't have to do it every day for the rest of your life. But for one week, write down what you do every 15 minutes. So now you can see where your time is being allocated. And then when you compare that to your priorities in life, whether it's your business, your investing, your family, your relationship, maybe it's your health, your wellness, whatever it is. If you're not spending an adequate amount of time in your week dedicated to your life priorities, then you're not going to feel in balance. And it's very, it can be a challenge to feel happy when you're like, hey, I really want to grow my business and you're spending half an hour a week in it. It's not going to grow right. and you get frustrated. So those are some of the things that I focus on with people is just trying to provide them structure and kind of with my background professionally as an investor as well happy to look at their business and just kind of share ideas with how they can start to grow. I think it's interesting. How you, you said that you kind of like, you don't just show up. Like if someone goes to say like a networking event, what are you going there for mm -hmm. just to show up? It's on your calendar. So mm -hmm. why are you going there? Is it to get contacts? Is it to make one contact? So it's almost like you have to have a goal and a plan going into these events. So it's to show up. So that's a good, good point you've had. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when it comes to networking as an investor. Um, you know, I always say try to make the goal of making at least one solid connection. And that doesn't mean that you'll do a joint venture deal with them. It doesn't mean you might wholesale to them or they might wholesale to you, but you never know who that person also knows. So making one good connection is important. But I think when it comes to networking, a lot of people fail to follow up. You know, it's like, hey, met you great. We had an awesome chat and that's it. And there's no email, there's no text following that. So I would encourage anybody going out there networking that is trying to grow their real estate investment business is to make sure you follow up with people. And you also want to stand out. Um, obviously, you guys have a podcast. You guys stand out like, hey, I have a podcast, right? Um, other things you could do if you don't have a podcast, or if you don't have a huge social media platform is send a video message. You know, take your phone, send a video message, say, hey, it's great to meet you. Let them know what you're working on. Um, and I think that's a better way to start really trying to build relationships that, you know, hopefully both of you guys can help each other moving forward. Yeah. That's a great point. I got, I mean, for me, I'm getting a lot out of this too. Like, do something different. Like, mm -hmm. A lot of people send a text, say, great to meet you. You say, no, just send a video. That yeah. extra little effort is probably even quicker than typing out a text. Be like, hey, great to meet you. I'm going to connect next week. Let's meet in person again. Yep. So no, that's, that's amazing advice. Thank you. Yeah, and especially if you do it right after, because when yeah. it's fresh in your mind, don't wait. Like yeah. you leave that networking event, get in your car, send it, or when you get home, you know, if it's late, just do it and send it. Don't wait. I find a lot of people procrastinate. Um, and one of the things I heard, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Alex Ramosi. Um, but oh, I yeah. to him a we, lot. We do. And one of the things he talked about was it took him, I can't remember, it was three or four years to build a website that really only took him an afternoon. Yeah. And it's because <laughs> procrastination. <laughs> yep. So when you have something that is important for you, for your business, just do it. Like, don't, don't wait, don't think about it. Don't pontificate, just take action. Yep. I agree. And one thing I actually changed this year was, uh, so everyone has their to-do list, right? So I mm -hmm. go through the night before and I pick the three top things on that list. And usually it's the stuff you hate to do or you don't want to do. And I do those first and it's made a big difference. No, absolutely. Um, you know, you start with what, what I call your hate list, Yeah. go through the things you hate because the things yeah. you hate are likely what's going to drive whatever you're trying to accomplish forward faster. Yep. Exactly. I call it my monkey list. That's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that monkey off your back. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so you've done uh, stocks, options, Forex, real estate. What would be your top strategy to create an income stream passively? You know, whether it's somebody just starting out or even experienced. I, I go back to real estate. Um, you know, there's a lot of leverage. You don't need any of your own money. You need money for real estate, but it doesn't have to be your own. Yep. So even if somebody is, you know, if all you can do is fog a mirror, 
you can figure out how to make money in real estate. Um, you do have to learn how to do it, but you can do it starting with wholesale, which is not passive, but at least it can start building up some capital for you yeah. to also create relationships that you can then turn into acquiring passive real estate. And even if you just learn the skill to hustle and to find properties, maybe you're good in sales and negotiation, you know, partner up with somebody that is maybe a more experienced investor or somebody that just has capital, but doesn't have the time maybe to do what you can do and then partner with them. And, you know, maybe if they're bringing the money, maybe you're not a 50, 50 partner in the first couple of deals. Maybe you're an 80, 20, but 20% of something is better than hundred percent of nothing. <laughs> yep. No, I think that's a great point is that multifamily, especially is a team sport. Mm -hmm. So you can't just do it on your own. I mean, you, you can, but you won't get very far. If you want to go far, you go with other people. And I think that's a, that's a great point. So. Absolutely. Yep. Agreed. So uh, my last question for you is if you could step into our shoes for the interview, mm -hmm. what's one question you would ask yourself that we didn't ask you? I would say the one question um, would be, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Mm. Um, and the reason I say that is it's something that would make me think because I haven't thought about 10 years yet. I've thought about five, but not 10. Mm -hmm. um, so when we started our business, our goal was to be kind of out of quote unquote, the rat race um, in 10 years. So, you know, we're several years in and, you know, getting to that point, um, hopefully in the next few, so we'll beat that. But beyond that, um, outside of being on a beach somewhere, my kids will be, you know, old enough where, you know, they are on their own and starting their own lives. So to escape the cold of Canada <laughs> would be awesome for six months six months of the year and just continue to, to grow both, you know, the investment business, grow my mentorship business to help lots of people. And, and that's it. And just continue to serve and continue to have fun and enjoy life. That's great. I love, no, I love it. Now, how do people reach out and contact you? Um, for life balance mentor and pretty much on every social media platform. So you can find me on Twitter, uh, YouTube. I uh, have a podcast that is now, I think, on episode four comes out next Sunday, and that's released every Sunday, where I just talk about different strategies on how to create that balance in your life for entrepreneurs. Um, obviously, Facebook as well. And for Thrive Community, Facebook, just look us up. Uh, happy to, if you want to join, if you're a real estate investor or entrepreneur that is looking to learn and grow your business and network with people. Uh, come join us and hang out and have fun. And if you are in a spot where, you know, you're struggling to figure out how to invest or how to start a side hustle and you have kids and you just don't see the time, contact me, lifebalancementor.com. I uh, do free half hour consultations to figure out, to help you figure out what's going on um, and hopefully provide some solutions. And if you want to do more with me, happy to, happy to help. That's great. That's great. We'll put the links in the uh, show notes too. Awesome. So, so now we get into our, our five to thrive section. So this is word association game. I'll just okay. rapid fire five words to you and just give us back the first word or phrase that comes to your mind. The only caveat is you cannot repeat your answer twice. Okay. All right. Here we go. First one, underwriting. Skill. Multifamily. Money. Failure. Success. Success. Mm, dream. Like it. And JFK properties. Building. Nice. Love it. I like it. Well, Kurt, it was great having you on the show. It was awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it.